Hey, this is Zafli Vaga from Nakinerf.com and it's time for another video in the beginner series. In this video we're going to talk about the 10 most common beginner guitar mistakes and obstacles. Then we're going to check out some ways in which we can avoid, correct and even eliminate them completely. Now, what I'm going to try to do is provide you with a solid foundation for your practicing routine, for your playing and for your progress on the instrument. Because I know that beginners have a lot to take in. Chords, scales, embellishments, techniques, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, how to produce sound, how to use your both your hands at the same time. It's a lot to take in, not to mention theory and music in general. So what you need is a good foundation and that's why I'm making this video because I want to try and give you that foundation. Now this video is going to be divided into two parts. Mistakes 1 to 5 will tackle the physical aspect of guitar playing, which is just technical. It's just technical stuff that you need to be aware of and pay attention to when you play. So that's easier to correct because once you know the right way to do things, then it's a lot easier to play and be comfortable on the guitar and produce a better sound, okay? Now, mistakes and obstacles six to 10, they're gonna tackle the psychological aspect. Okay, and that's a lot more important because the psychological aspect has an impact on everything. Okay, and it has an impact on the way you see yourself on the instrument and the way that you see the instrument and your practicing routine and your own playing. Um, so it's a lot more important and that's why the psychological aspect of playing, um, I kept it for later, okay, because we're going to tackle the easier stuff first, okay? The psychological um, obstacles are, are things that you might not even be aware of, okay? So we're going to talk about that later. Let's start with the easier stuff, okay? Um, mistakes and obstacles, one to five, techniques, let's go. Um, the first mistake and obstacle um, is this. string buzzing. That's the most frustrating thing. You want to produce a sound, you want to hear a note, you don't want to hear noise. Okay? You want to hear a clear sound. Okay? You don't want to hear... Okay? This. So, um, how do you correct that? It's actually very easy because it has nothing to do with strength. It has nothing to do with how strongly you apply the pressure on the neck. It has to do with finger position. Okay, let's say that I wanna uh, that I wanna play fret number five. Okay, fret number five. I'm playing the fourth string. Okay, now fret number five. I wanna put my finger between the steel frets between steel frets four and five, right? One, two, three, four, and five. That's where fret five is. Okay? Now, if I put my finger at the beginning of the fret, closer to the fourth steel fret, then the string will buzz no matter how strongly I will apply pressure. I'm choking the neck right now and the string is still buzzing. Why? Because I'm closer to the fourth fret instead of closer to the fifth fret. Okay? You want to put your finger at the middle to the end of the fret. Okay? If this is fret four, steel fret four, and this is steel fret five, then I want to be here, not here. If this is fret four, I want to be here, near fret five. So, if I'm, I know that my nose is the finger, so I look funny, but you get my point. So, if I put my finger right between them, right here, then it will produce good sound. And the closer I am to fret 5, to steel fret 5, the, the cleaner the sound will be and the easier it will be for me to press. Okay? If I'm closer to the fourth fret, then the string will begin to buzz. Now I'm closer, I'm right next to the fifth fret. Now I'm going back, middle of the fret. 
beginner of beginning of the fret. Okay, and I'm choking the neck. I'm really, I'm really applying pressure. So you see, it has nothing to do, not nothing, but it has very little to do with force. Okay, so you just put your finger on at the middle to the end of the fret. That's all there is to it. The middle to the end of the fret, and it works every time. Okay, let's try it at the 12th fret, for example. Now I'm closer to the 11th fret. The string is buzzing. Now I'm at the middle of the fret, and now I'm at the end of the fret. Okay, the middle to the end of the fret, that's the sweet spot. Okay, and if you put a chord on, then you'll notice that if the chord is playing correctly and you hear all of those notes and nothing is buzzing, then you'll see that the barring finger is right next to the, uh, to the fret and this finger is also closer to the fret. This is in the middle of the fret. Um, this is closer to the fret. Okay, I'm talking about the steel frets. So it's always the middle to the end of the fret you're aiming for. Okay, that's it. Taking care of string buzzing. I, as I told you, it's not necessarily easy. You still need to, uh, you still need to get used to that. Uh, for example, in soloing, okay, you wanna always be playing the the middle to the end of the fret. Okay, all of these were middle to the end of the fret, position-wise. Okay, that's why nothing buzzed. So um, that's, that's all I'm gonna say about buzzing and I'll try not to say the word fret again, okay? Now, that's mistake and obstacle number one, taken care of. Uh, moving on, number two, wrist position. I'm talking about this wrist and also this wrist. Um, but this wrist plays a lot more, um, uh, has, well, it has more problems because you almost uh, never see someone play like this. But you see a lot of people play like this. And that's not healthy. Um, it can cause wrist pain, it can cause tendon pain, and um, it's really not healthy. You want to keep your hand um, as straight as possible. Okay, if I'm playing, I want to keep the hand as straight as possible. Now, if, uh, for example, I'm putting on a bar chord, then the, my hand, um, I'm, I'm actually lifting my arm and I'm lifting my elbow a little, so the hand would be a bit, a bit more straight. Because if I'm doing this, um, then my wrist is going to hurt eventually. And it happens a lot quicker than you think. And if your wrist hurts, stop playing. Okay, stop playing and start practicing. Um, just practice um, putting on normal chords, open position chords, until you get used to having your wrist straight. Okay, you wanna move your fingers, not your hand. Okay, and if you need to move your hand, just move it a little back and forth, okay? This is good, 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 this, okay? This is, if you feel, um, if you feel pressure here and here, then it's not good, okay? You wanna keep it as loose as possible. If you're doing this, you're not loose, okay? So for example, I'm playing chords. See, straight hand. Okay, now I'm moving it a little. Okay, but it's not this. Now let's try bar chords, okay? Look at my wrist. You see, it's still smooth. It's not, it's not a hard angle. So if I'm doing this, it's wrong. Just try, just try to keep your wrist straight, as straight as possible. Again, if you need to, lift your shoulder a little. Lift your shoulder, lift your elbow. Okay? And see, it has... It has... Impact. Okay? You need to use your entire arm. Now, um, again, this isn't easy to get used to. You need practice. Everything takes practice. 
but it's a lot better to practice and get frustrated at not succeeding for like a couple of days instead of hurting your arm and not being able to play at all because your hand would hurt. Okay, um, so that's about wrist position. Now, this hand has the risk of, um, of wrong wrist position as well. For example, I know some players who do this when they finger pick. Okay, when they finger pick, they play like this, and that's wrong. You want to keep your, your uh, hand as straight as possible also here, okay? Um, check out this hand. Okay, also in picking with a pick. Okay, with a pick. Um, there's no pick in my hand right now, but I know people who pick like this. And again, the wrist, wrong. You want to keep your hand as straight as possible and just use your movement from the wrist and from your elbow and your shoulder. Because if you have your wrist like this, you can't move your hand. Uh, and you want your hand to be moving freely, okay? And this hand as well. And you can also uh, stretch a little uh, before you begin playing and just use your fingers and, um, I don't know, and do this and this. Um, but it's unnecessary if you're playing correctly, okay? But if your hand hurts, stop playing. That's, that's the rule. If your hand hurts, doesn't matter if it's muscle pain, stop playing, okay? Give your hands some rest. But we're going to talk about that later on. So, we've taken care, we've taken care of the wrist. Um, okay, number three. Um, using one finger for soloing. I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of students who, um, who have a hard time with the concept of using more than one finger. For example, if they want to solo, they do this. And that's just using too much energy for something that could be a lot more simple. Okay, you're wasting energy. Um, if you have a hard time getting used to using four fingers, okay, then just use two. If you use two fingers, that's already better than using one finger because two fingers can enable you to play almost anything if you put your mind to it. Uh, using fingers one and two. That already sounds better than one finger. Using fingers one and three. Okay, I also used finger two because I'm already too used to it. But you can use fingers one and three or one and two. Always try and use more than one finger. You don't have to use your pinky if you're still not used to it, but at least use fingers one and two. Okay, because um, it, you can't hammer on with one finger, you can't do this. Okay, you can slide, but you can't hammer on, and you can't pull up, and you, can, you can't pull off. Okay, you, again, you can slide, but you can't pull off. Okay, and you can do this, a slide forward and backward, but you can't hammer on and pull off and that's only one fret away only one fret apart a half step what happens when you have a full step okay two frets you can't do anything with that because if you slide it will sound like a slide okay for example you can do this and you want to because you want to have the entire arsenal of uh, of embellishments in your bag of tricks. So just use two fingers instead of all four of them. 
If it's too difficult for you to get used to all four of them or the pinky, just use fingers one, two, and three. That's all, these fingers, okay? And work your way up to using all of them. Um, and that's it, that takes care of, um, oh, that takes care of, I, I didn't tell you why this is so important. What kind of teacher am I? Um, it's important because if you use one finger, you need to stop the note every time you want to go to another note. Okay? This sounds fine, but if you use two fingers, okay, only one more finger, then you can lengthen the notes. Okay? Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but the notes on the one finger solo were really, really short. They were like instead of okay, I didn't, I didn't really have a choice because every time I wanted to change a note, I had to stop the note I was playing, move my hand around and pick another note instead of playing uh, the note and then changing a finger just in time for the next note. Just listen to this. opposed to one finger. Okay, I have no hammer-on and pull-off option, only a slide option. That's why you want to get used to playing with at least two fingers right from the start. Okay? Hope that's clear. You can do amazing solos with one finger, but why? Why limit yourself? If you want to play with one finger, play with one finger, but know how to play with more than one finger, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, so that's number three. Number four is arching your fingers. Correctly arching your fingers for pressing down the strings and not interrupting other fingers. This is tricky for two reasons. Sometimes you do want to interrupt other strings and sometimes you need to bar. So um, how do you know which way to arch? It all depends on what you want to get out of the guitar. For example, uh, the correct way of arching is this. Let's just put on one finger, okay? It's this. You want to play with the top of your finger, right? Um, like about, about uh, I don't know, half an inch from the fingernail, right here, okay? This part of the hand, this part, okay? The top of your finger, okay? You want to play, let's say I'm playing the third string, okay? I want to arch my finger so it won't touch the second string or the fourth string, okay? Second string is open, third string is pressed, and fourth string is open. Okay, let's just use the second fret. Okay? You see, all three strings are playing at the same time. Open second and fourth strings, and I'm pressing down the third string, and I'm arching my finger so it doesn't touch any of the other strings. But sometimes I do want to mute one of those strings, so I will rest my finger on them. I will arch my finger and just rest it. I'll take the wrist, I'll take I'll, the wrist, I'll take the, the elbow back. I won't use my finger, I won't change my arching, and I'll take my elbow back so my fingers will touch, for example, the second, the, the, um, the second string, okay? So now we'll hear the first string. We won't hear the second string because it's touching it. We'll hear the third string and we'll hear the fourth string, okay? You see? So we have strings one, three, and four ringing and the second string is muted, okay? Just, I was, just by taking the elbow back a little, okay? Now, if I want a bar, then just bar, okay? 
But, for example, if I want to bar, uh, say, a B minor chord, okay? And I want to mute the... So this is barring, and all of these are arching, okay? Um, and I want to mute the E string, the E bass. So I'll just touch it lightly from underneath with the barring finger, okay? If this is the E string and this is the barring finger, I'll just touch it. Okay, I won't press it up, I'll just touch it to mute it. So, this is with the E string open. Okay, and this is with the E string muted. You see? No E string. So, if I pick, if I, I mean strum, we don't hear the E string open. Okay, so, th so those are the options, but you always want to arch. Okay, if you're not barring, then you're arching. And if you want to mute, just mute. Now, uh, just take your elbow back or forth uh, if you want to mute the, the upper string. Uh, I mean lower in pitch, but upper physically. Uh, then just take your hand a bit forward. Um, another thing to remember, I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, another thing to remember is if you want to bar, let's say, two fingers, uh, I mean two, two frets, for example, if we're doing this, okay, so we're either um, barring this completely and barring strings two, three, and four for the A shape, and we're either muting, because this is not barring all the way through, we're either muting the E string or lifting or or pushing the, the oh by the way I hope you're noticing that I'm uh, using wrong wrist position uh, because I'm exaggerating I want you to see the exaggeration um, but my wrist is wrong and it hurts by the way so I'm stopping but I just want to show you that if I move my elbow forth um, and I lift I lift my barring finger, my second barring finger, just a little, then we're gonna hear the E string. Okay, that's a more advanced technique. I just wanted to show you everything about arching that I could think of. Okay, but the most basic thing is that you wanna press with the top of your finger and just arch the fingers and let everything else be open. For example, let's just put on this chord. Okay. It's, it's, it's D7 add 9 over A, uh, doesn't matter. Okay, just, I picked it to show you that the E string is open even though I'm playing three different strings above it. Okay, and the A string is open as well. Um, and if I wanted the E string, then I'd mute the A string with this finger from below. Okay? Okay, you see, and no A string because this finger is touching it. Okay, that's what I was talking about. All right, so that's four, arching. Now, five, number five, I've left this for last because it's partly psychological. Strumming and picking too lightly or too strongly. What do I mean? I mean that sometimes beginner guitar players are insecure. So they either lower the volume on their playing and they just play. So no one else could hear them. Or they are afraid they'll break a string. Um, or they play really loud. Okay? Uh, and that kind of suffocates the sound. Now, I'm not talking about dynamics here at all. I know that there's dynamics and you need to play uh, with low volume and with high volume and you need, to, you need to strum and sometimes you do want to play like this, but we're not talking about dynamics. We're talking about beginner playing. Okay, you want to produce a fair sound. I think I got my guitar out of tune. Never mind. This is not a sound lesson. So, okay, you want to produce a sound. So just play it. You don't, some players will play this like this. Okay? 
and they'll be afraid of playing louder so their parents would hear them or their brothers and sisters would hear them or their friends they, they don't want anybody to hear them playing okay um, so they play really low key okay um, why just play your guitar be free just enjoy and even if the strings buzz still enjoy your playing what does it matter don't, don't care about sound okay just just care about having fun okay on the other hand there are those that will play like this okay and will hit the strings now again I'm not talking about dynamics I'm talking about thinking that nobody hears you and that nobody notices that you're playing so you play really loud so they'll notice and if you solo then you'll solo like this okay again when you want dynamics and you want to produce that sound then it's okay okay uh, for example okay I can't think of an example right now, but if I really get into it, then I'll... Let's try. Okay, you see, I, I tried to come up with a lick that would uh, justify um, slapping the, the notes. Okay, so you see, that's dynamics. But if, you, if that's not your intention and you just want someone to hear you play, and show off that you're, you started learning the guitar, then you might break a string because there's a difference between using correct dynamics and just slapping the string correctly than just playing really, really loud. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I was the loud kind. So I broke tons of strings. Uh, so unless you have an endorsement behind you and you have a string company endorsing you and and just delivering you new st with new strings every time you break one, then I suggest you'd be a little more careful and just, you know, play, play a little lower uh, in volume. Um, but again, it, it goes both ways. Y you're, you, um, the, the guitar beginner in security might go to play Okay, did you hear that? I nearly haven't heard it. Um, to this. Okay, and that chokes the sound and nobody can hear what you're playing. Okay, so just, you wanna go, go, go. Um, okay, so that's about, um, that's about um, taking care of the strength and and proper volume for practicing okay now uh, so let's recap we had string buzzing middle to the end of the fret we had wrist position don't do this always try to keep your hand as straight as possible also this hand uh, we've had playing with more than one finger at least two um, arching your fingers and just uh, tilting your hand a little to the to, to forward and backwards to uh, mute unnecessary strings or strings you want to mute um, and we've had strumming we've had strumming and picking um, without um, without considering dynamics yet okay now we're on we're off to the important part the psychological setbacks now the first psychological setback mistake slash obstacle number six is comparing yourself to other players okay um, and the big the biggest mistake you can make is to compare yourself to a professional player okay if you compare yourself to slash or the edge or Eric Clapton or Greg Howe um, then of course you're gonna be frustrated and you're gonna give up really really fast because um, let's face it chances are none of us is going to sound like Eric Clapton ever okay um, and 
Well, we can sound like Eric Clapton, and we can sound like Slash, and we can imitate their playing, but why should we? If you think about it for a second, why do you want to be unoriginal? You want to be influenced by many different styles and many different players, okay? So don't compare yourself. First of all, don't compare yourself to any player, okay? Not even people you know. If you, pre if you compare yourself to your cousin or your friend who's been playing for a year or two and you're just starting out, then of course y you're still not gonna sound as good as they are. And as far as you're concerned, um, as far as you know, if you keep practicing, and have patience, you might even grow to be a better guitar player than the people that you know and that you admire. Um, and you, you have no idea where you'll go with your style. For example, you might, um, you might admire one of your friends who's playing uh, fingerstyle. And you start playing fingerstyle because they're playing fingerstyle and you like it. But you're growing tired of fingerstyle eventually, after a month or two, and you want to start playing blues, okay? So you're going in a different direction, and you never know which way uh, your musical taste is going to take you. So never compare yourself to a different player, because you have no idea what they've been through. You have no idea about their frustrations, and uh, who they've compared themselves to, and, and uh, how hard it's been for them. Okay, because there's a rule. The better a player is, uh, the longer they practice and, uh, and the, the harder road they've taken. Because, um, for example, there's a guitar player I really like, um, and he, he, said, he was asked once about a technique that he came up with. He invented that technique, and he said, well, I was so frustrated that I couldn't play like my idol that I came up with this cheat way of playing what he played, okay? The guy's idol played a certain way and my idol couldn't imitate that, so he came up with something new, okay? So for him, that was a failure, but he came up with a new technique. So I hope you see what I'm what I'm getting at. Um, don't compare yourself to, to others because you have no idea what they've been through. Okay? You have no idea. Um, and in their mind, they still have a long way to go too. We all do. Okay? Um, for example, um, I know, I personally know um, a jazz guitar legend and he personally told me that every week is still learning a new composition and a new piece and he's he's still going he's 60 years old and he's still going to a teacher he's still going to a guitar teacher to teach him stuff that he doesn't know to to teach him new techniques and to teach him new um, new styles that he still hadn't mastered on the guitar okay you never stop learning music so never compare yourself to another player. You have no idea what they're going through, okay? Just take your time, have fun, that's the most important thing, okay? Psychological setback number two, okay? Mistake slash obstacle number seven is assuming that you suck, okay? Um, I see a lot of students get really, really hard on themselves uh, and they say, no, uh, I'm not doing this correctly, and I, I need more practice, and my chords suck, my solos suck, my improvisation sucks, my finger picking sucks, I can't hold the pick correctly, and quite frankly, I have no idea what they're talking about, because they're playing great, and most of the time, you, you think, and it, it comes from comparing yourself to other players, because you see them and, and it looks so easy when they do it that you think, oh, I still find it hard, so I must suck. And that's not necessarily true. And uh, I see it mostly, unfortunately, I, I see it mostly with female students. And um, they mostly play better than the boys and they learn quicker than the boys, but they're sure that they suck and that they, they, they don't play correctly, and that their technique is off, and that their sound is off, and that the guitar is always out of tune, and 
and nothing is wrong. And boys also uh, have the same problem. They're, they, they, they're sure that they suck and that they don't remember anything and that the chords uh, are wrong and that something is off and the scales are wrong and they don't remember the scale and they have to check the notebook. What's the rush? Have fun. Have fun. The, 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 you have nobody watching over your shoulder and saying, uh, no, you need to be better. Oh, that string buzzed. <laughs> you must suck. Nobody's saying that. Okay? People want to enjoy your music no matter if the chord sounds 100% correct. Okay? If you play an A minor chord and it sounds like this. Okay? People won't crucify you for it. Okay? Just keep getting better and just have patience and have fun with your playing. Even if you suck, it doesn't matter if you suck because that's what practicing is all about. You'll get better and one day you'll wake up and you'll find yourself playing something that will blow your mind and you'll say, wait a second, I couldn't play that a month ago. But it will never happen if you keep saying, I suck, I suck, I suck, because you're gonna give up. And that's sometimes what happens, okay? It, it happens about 75% of the time, unfortunately. No matter, I, I sometimes I take, um, I take my phone and I record them while they play, and about a week or two later, I'll play for them, and they'll say, oh, that's nice, who's that? And I say, that's you, and they don't believe me. They think I'm lying because they listen to themselves play and they think they suck, so it can't be that player because that player is good. Um, and sometimes they still don't believe me that it's them. So uh, don't assume that you suck. Don't compare yourself to others. Just have fun, okay? Now, the third psychological setback is that you don't have enough patience. What do I mean by that? I don't mean that you need to have patience and, um, and just wait until something happens. No. There are instances... No, let's, let's put it differently. Every beginner guitar player is better at something different. Okay? There are beginner players who are better at chords and there are beginner players who are really, really good at improvising solos. And I've had a seven-year-old student who could improvise an electric guitar solo you wouldn't believe, okay? It almost made me give up playing because he was so good. But he had problems with chords and he had problems with uh, finger picking and uh, so everyone has their own problems. But everyone has their own uh, advantages because some players are better with chords right away. Some players are better with scales and solos right away. Some players are better with uh, compositions and finger style. Some players are really good with a pick. Some players hate the pick. Some players um, find uh, barred chords really difficult. Some players have uh, their way with barred chords right away. Um, the problem is that you need to have patience for everything else that you're not good at, okay? Um, because you see yourself playing, uh, oh, the solos are really easy, so why don't the chords uh, sound right? Because chords should be easier than solos, right? No, not right. Everyone is an individual, and, and for each their own way of learning and practicing. So you need to have patience and just let everything uh, grow. If, if you play, for example, if your chord playing is this good, and your solo playing is this good, then just keep playing chords and learn how to play solo and practice until they're both at the same level. And who says that they need to be at the same level? Not all guitar players play everything. There are solo players, there are chord players, there are um, backup players, there are lead men. So uh, you don't have to play everything right, especially when you just start out. Okay, so have patience. It doesn't have to sound right right at the beginning. 
Okay, um, and what I, um, what I like to tell people is that um, you can learn a song or a solo and you can play it about 50%, 60% right and then move on to the next thing and learn something else. And then when you come back to that solo, you'll find that you've become a, a little bit better by learning more that now the solo that you tried to play and was so difficult at first will be a little easier because you got used to it and, you, and you've played something different as well. I, I hope you're following my own logic because if you try to play this... Okay? And you couldn't play it correctly. But um, you moved on and you practiced it and you've also uh, played this. Okay? And then about a month later you come back to this. Okay? You find that it's a bit easier because you've practiced this. Okay? Um, so... Um, Everything, everything affects everything, okay? The chords affect your solos and your solos affect the chords and everything together affect your ears and you hear better and you have more musical ideas. So um, just have patience and just, and don't be hard on yourself if you don't succeed at first. If you haven't succeeded at something at first, it doesn't mean that as you progress, you won't be able to play it you, forever. Okay, you'll just come back to it and play it when you're a little bit better. That's it. Okay, now um, another thing about patience is muscle memory. And that's probably the most important aspect of guitar playing in general. Sometimes your fingers don't do what you're telling them to do because they're not used to it yet. And you keep practicing and you fail doesn't sound right and then you uh, say okay I can't do that lick or I can't do that solo or I can't play that chord progression and you move on and then one day you come back and you play that chord progression or solo perfectly without even practicing it why because the muscles take time to remember things. They take time to implement new things. Um, and if you, um, there's a trick that if, for example, you want to learn a new lick, for example, this. Um, this lick, but you can, you, because um, the finger picking is too complex for you yet. And you play it really, really slowly and it doesn't make sense, because when uh, sometimes when finger picking is played slowly it doesn't make sense. Okay, something like that. Okay, I was trying to not make sense on purpose. Um, so, um, it doesn't make sense. You get frustrated, you go to sleep. You wake up, you take the guitar, and suddenly you're playing this. Why? What happened? You slept, and you let your muscles memorize what you were playing. Okay, it's really important to take a break and let your muscles work it through. I have a trick uh, that I teach my students. If you uh, practice something and it doesn't work, play something else. Play something else. Play something that you already know. And then come back and practice some more. And it will go a little better. And then leave the guitar, go to sleep, go do something else. Um, and then the next day take your guitar and practice and you'll see that you've grown a bit better and that it goes a little bit easier because you need to let the muscles memorize what you've just learned uh, learns what you've just learned okay um, so that's number uh, eight now number nine is trying to practice everything together 
okay? You want to learn uh, the entire uh, Another Brick in the Wall solo. That's a mistake. You want to break it down. You want to break it down, you want to learn it lick by lick. Just learn one lick, okay? Learn one lick. Um, um, okay, just focus on that. Play that for a week if you need to. And only then move on to the next licks uh, and work your way up. Don't try and play the whole solo at first because then you'll be overwhelmed and you'll think, oh man, I must suck. No, that's not true. Um, I've been playing for 20 years now and I still come up to a new composition or a new solo I want to learn and I just go over it and I never succeed on the first try. I'll start breaking it down lick by lick and learn it slowly, methodically. Just break it down. What's the rush? Have fun. Again, you've have, you, you've, you have nobody uh, watching over your shoulder and saying, oh, you're just playing that lick? Why don't you play the entire solo? Okay, and if you have somebody like that, just tell them to, I don't know, go do something to themselves. Um, because um, there's no rush. And the slower you go at first, the faster you're going to go eventually. Okay? A slow start doesn't necessarily mean a slow, uh, a slow road because uh, you, sometimes you just need time to warm up. Okay, so when you, whenever you learn something, <clears throat> just break it down, break it down to the smallest pieces you can digest. Uh, if you can't play this, then break it down to three different licks. Break it down to this. Okay, that's the first lick. And then the second lick. Okay? Until you get it down. And then that. Okay, until you get it. Doesn't work. Until you get it right. Okay? And then work on getting them together. Okay? First and second licks. And when that's comfortable, add the third lick. Okay? Break it down. What's the rush? Have patience. Um, as you see, the psychological setbacks work together. Okay? They tend to come in groups. Now, the last one, number 10. Mistake slash obstacle number 10, psychological obstacle number 5. Playing perfectly. I think we've covered that, but um, but it has to do uh, with a different aspect of playing perfectly. Um, many of us, artists, musicians, um, tend to be perfectionists. If it's not perfect, then it's not good. Well, that's not true, because uh, if you listen to the really great guitar players, their playing wasn't perfect. Their playing wasn't perfect at all. It was dirty, it was offbeat, sometimes the guitar was a bit out of tune, um, and that's the magic of it. Sometimes the strings buzzed, and um, that's, that's the beauty of it. Play, the guitar playing, music, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be uh, perfect. It shouldn't. It shouldn't sit on the beat like a metronome. It 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 can be a bit off the beat. That's the beauty of it. The instruments shouldn't sit together. It's not electronic music. It's not digital music. Um, it's not a drum machine. Um, if you put a drummer with a drum machine, you'll see that um, the drummer that feels the music is always a bit off of the drum machine, a little bit off of the, uh, the metronome. The drummer that sits perfectly isn't interesting because if the drums fall exactly on the beat, then what different is that drummer from a drum machine, okay? The human aspect of music 
is the imperfectness, okay? It's the small mistakes in sound. It's the small, um, it's the, 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 the offbeat. It's the, it's the, it's the dirt. Uh, for example, um, a lot of players, if, if you've ever listened to John Schofield, he really likes to dirty up the playing. He might do something like this. Um, okay? And push the, the string off of the guitar neck. Uh, now, on acoustic, it doesn't work, but on electric guitar, it produces a sound. And for example, uh, there are some players who use this as an effect, and some players use uh, this. Okay, and it all depends on what you want to say with your music. So, uh, perfect isn't perfect, okay? Um, if you want to play perfectly, then you should ask yourself if you're on the right instrument. Because part of the magic is the dirt. Part of the magic is the string buzzing. And part of the magic is hearing this when you move between, between chords. Okay? You, yeah, yeah, the guitar is really out of tune by now uh, with all those... <laughs> demonstrations. Um, so you might oil your strings or buy flat wound strings so you won't hear the slide. But some people like it and some people uh, listen to acoustic music just for this, just to hear the fingers slide on the strings. And that's not perfect. That's a noise. It shouldn't be there. Or should it? Okay, so don't be a perfectionist. Try to find your own way of dirtying things up. Okay? Um, there's an 11th point I wanted to make. A bonus point. Um, that's more, more of an advice than a mistake or obstacle. Okay? My advice is take risks. Okay? Take risks. Uh, play something that shouldn't sound right. Uh, try and um, try and change something in your playing. Try and pick with a coin instead of a pick and see how that sounds. Uh, and above all, try to play above your level. Um, and try to play more difficult stuff than uh, stuff that's more difficult than what you're playing right now. Okay, for example, if you're learning um, if you're learning an acoustic solo, then try to play uh, an electric solo on your acoustic guitar. Try to learn, um, if, for example, if you're playing uh, the um, Wish You Were Here solo. Okay? Um, try to learn the Another Brick in the Wall solo and play it on your acoustic guitar and try and see how that sounds. Okay, you might come up with something really interesting and challenge yourself at the same time. And if the uh, Wish You Were Here solo is a bit difficult for you right now, then the Another Brick in the Wall solo would be very difficult, but it will make the Wish You Were Here solo a bit easier because you'll try more difficult things and suddenly your fingers will feel a little more comfortable on the acoustic solo. Okay, so challenge yourself. Try to push yourself forward and try to play things that you shouldn't play yet because there's no such thing. And even if you fail and don't succeed in playing it, your fingers will still learn something new along the way. Okay, they'll still pick up something. You might not even notice it at first, but in time those little somethings will add up and become your own style. Okay? So just challenge yourself and don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of playing imperfectly and making mistakes and take your time and enjoy your playing. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope that it was helpful for you and I hope that you've you, you took something from this video and thank you very much for watching and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel then you're more than welcome to it uh, click subscribe and I'll see you the next lesson and go have fun and have patience bye for now